you have brought the Lord, that she would, anybody could call her and ask for prayer, she would not have a nickel in her pocket. But she would be there for that person. Praying. Anybody remember mama? She, she loved to pray. If you show up, she'll pray for you. Yeah. Every time you come to God, she will pray. That's the legacy that she left us. That she was all 12 of us. At one time, she would make all the grandkids make us pray. I mean, not just one hour, but hours. <laughs> if you want to say that, that. Of course, Marie didn't quite make it because she didn't sleep. <laughs> but as my mother helped to, I watched her operate in the Shield Faith of Church of God in Christ, as she ministered, and as her help took place, she was telling us then, my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I kept the course. I stayed on track. I birthed Sonny, Pastor Harry. I birthed Pastor uh, George. I birthed Pastor Hardy. Yes, come on. I'm waiting on Eddie. You still could. But even then, I say thank y'all. Thank you, Mr. Faith. Thank you, Pastor Beard. Thank you, First Lady Beard. Thank you so much for loving my family. Loving it. God bless you. Give it up to God, uh, who is the head of our lives. Amen. I am grateful. To, to all of you first for being here with our family. I don't know, over the last couple of days, yesterday, today, you've heard uh, what a, a devoted woman my mother was. And to be honest, it's, it would be hard for me to quantify uh, her love for people. Uh, I, I sat uh, at the wake of that, I sat and listened to everyone, and everything they, I heard them say, I said, you know, that's true. That's true. She was always, always going to stay. She was measured. She was not someone that was erratic. And when she saw us get erratic, we heard all of the siblings testify about how it was no problem for her to call everybody, everybody to her house. You weren't wrong. It was time, time to pray. She called everybody. You come yes, over with your children, and we would pray. Uh, I'm grateful because God allowed me to to learn a lot about life from my mother. There were things when I say she was measured. There were things that she went to say certain things. I was 35 years old before she disgusted me the death of my father. And he died the day I was conceived. I was 45 years old before she took me to the place of his death. When she took me there, Reverend Carter, she didn't say a word. She didn't even get out the car. She just knew that at that point in life, I needed to be at that place. <coughs> She was that way with everyone. She wasn't someone that would just spill. Though she was emotional about God, she was measured by everything she did in life. Right. Amen. When she was at work, she worked and she submitted herself to right. the people she worked for. Yes, she did. She always believed in working. Uh, I cooked at home, and when I left, Ed cooked. <laughs> Because we, we, we did not want her coming home and having to worry about cooking. Because she was working all the time. Because so to all of you, I'm grateful that you're here. I'm grateful for Cornerstone and their kindness. I'm grateful for uh, Ella Beard and, uh, and East Side. Where's Ella Frank's side? You know, these are men that were caretakers of my mother's life. They
they were ministers that ministered into our home and into our heart and, and by extension ministered into all our lives. I'm grateful for all of you. And I love all that you've done for my mother, for my family, and, and we thank you. That's all. This is my mother's favorite song. And he's going to do one verse. That's it. He
those remarks from Brother Simon's son. We're going to have special remarks coming from Pastor Ethel Johnson. That's going to be followed by a solo from Dickie French. Words of comfort. We have Superintendent Frank G. Sauls here. He's going to offer us words of comfort. And then another solo by Holly Simon. Let's say that for Pastor Ethel Johnson as she comes. Say it's okay. 
Let's go. 